just when I decided to sit down and start filming, one of the neighbor's kids started crying and I had to like wait until he can't hear it anymore. <laughs> it sounds like she's just throwing a tantrum for like having to go inside though. Hi everyone and thank you so much for watching. I am trying a new background because I want to find a place in my place where I can film a video where I can actually do a talk through and the lighting's fine and all that. So today I'm trying here. Got a bit of a rustic background going on but I might dig it. I'll see afterwards. And I feel like I'm whispering to some extent because I can hear all my neighbors' conversations. I don't necessarily want them to hear my conversations. So sorry if I'm a bit hushed, but tonight is date night. It's my boyfriend's birthday and I really want to do a get ready with me. So I'm going to do my makeup now. I don't really have a plan. I have like three, four different looks that I want to try. And I've yet to decide which one I actually want to do. I know I want to actually I want to use tape. I need to go get tape. But first... I'm going to spray some primer. This is the Smashbox Centering Citrus Primer Water, and I love it. So I'm going to spray that, prepare my eyelids, and then I'll go get some tape to make my life easier. I'm using this Essence I Love Stage eyeshadow base, and I'm going to slather it all over my eyelids. And I'm going to mix in some concealer as well, because when I start with my eyeshadow, I don't want there to be an edge around my eyeshadow that doesn't blend with my foundation because like I don't want to cover my eyeshadow with my foundation but then I don't want there to be an edge either especially like right here I struggle to get the foundation in afterwards so I'm applying the concealer there now there so I can go up to my brows and then out towards the sides if you start with your eyeshadow first you know what I'm talking about I hate it when I see someone doing their makeup and then they have like an edge around their eyeshadow where they couldn't blend in their foundation so gotta make sure I don't have that and also I just washed and straightened my hair and I put in some argan oil to like make my hair healthy and shiny and all that jazz but now my hair is super slippery and this clip is just not holding it because it's just sliding out the whole time also I feel like I'm sitting like this because my mirror is on this side like I'm not facing the camera. I'm taking whatever powder from my kabuki brush and then stamping it on. It doesn't really matter if my eye primer isn't entirely dry because this is enough to prevent it from creasing before I get started. If you don't set it a bit at least you have to work really fast with your eyeshadow and it might still crease in anyways so rather just set it in anyways to be safe. I know it's like a beginner's trick to use sellotape to get your angle straight but I did it the other day when I did my makeup in my microbiology lab. If you want a little preview, this is what it looked like. I am an accountant. Do you want to say hi to the internet? Greetings, internet. <laughs> I am a random human being in Griselda's life, number 746. Wow, it sounds you so will, popular. You will never see me again. Goodbye. And I decided, since there is scotch tape on the benches used by us to mark our test tubes and our experiments, why don't I just use it in my makeup? I haven't done that in ages. And it made my life 20 times easier, let me tell you, because I can blend without caring where it's going and I could draw my eyeliner on, I had to stick the tape back on because I took it off too early, but I could draw my eyeliner on without having to hold something up because I don't like my eyeliner, it's ridiculous, so I need a straight edge to work against and if you have tape, you don't have to hold the straight edge, the straight edge holds itself. Now I am wearing this shirt, I have it on because I know I want to do a red lip. But I'm not sure if the red lip is going to suit the shirt. I tested the color and it really doesn't go with this orange type of red, number one. And number two, date night is not the night to be wearing a red lip. In hindsight, I realized it's probably a bad idea. Because I am taking him out for dinner for his birthday. And we're going to be eating and then eat it off and it looks bad because your lipstick is half off. Yada yada yada. I'm going to be starting out with this Wet n Wild palette. And I'm going to take that color there with a fluffy blending brush and I'm going to blend it into my crease. I am planning on taking my boyfriend out on a blind date for his 20th birthday this weekend. And I don't remember how I thought of this. I just remember I was like, oh my gosh, this would be a fun idea. And then I realized, oh my gosh, it's his birthday. What better time to do something ridiculous like this? And prep, basically what we're gonna do is I told him to bring a blindfold and I told him it's so that he can't see the restaurant we're going to but it's actually so that he wears it the whole time so he's literally going to be blind for the whole date that's the plan I don't know how it's gonna go hopefully it's gonna go well because I don't know how I would feel if someone tells me you're gonna be blindfolded the whole night it might be a bit weird 
But I asked like a bunch of his friends what they would think and they said, you know what, no, it sounds like a good idea, I should try it out. And this year I thought I want to try giving people experiences rather than gifts. It freaks me out more than a gift, but that's just me being paranoid that the person's not gonna like it, there's not much you can do about that. I'm going to take this nude shade with this flat yet fluffy brush and I'm going to apply it like here under my brow bone and drag it down to help that blend. What I'm planning on doing is he's going to meet me at my place at 6 and then we're going to catch an Uber to the restaurant because obviously when he's blindfolded he can't drive. It's a Portuguese restaurant I used to work at and I remember this one thing we served, it's like a hangover buster type of sandwich type of thing drenched in cheese and it looks delicious this color is next by the way same brush so that's why we're going there tonight i'm excited to try it i initially thought that we're both going to eat something then i realized if he's blindfolded he's not going to be able to eat all that much on his own because he's not going to know what's going on in his plate and it's not like you can just stab and eat like a bowl of pasta so I was like, okay, cool. We're just gonna order the one thing and I'm gonna have to feed it to him and I want to record us going out so that he gets to see the date as well afterwards so they can actually see what we did. For that, I'm thinking of taking my tripod with me, but that might be a bit awkward to just set up a tripod in a restaurant, but they won't mind. It's fine. But as long as no one comes up to us like, yo, what are you doing? It's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna take some black because I want some drama. Yo, when I did my makeup in the shopping center, a video that's also already up, and it went kind of like this. I was really hoping they weren't gonna notice me doing anything, or even being in the shop to begin with, but apparently that's not happening. So what exactly are you doing? Something fast. Don't be hella dramatic, don't you worry. <laughs> I used black for the first time in ages and it worked quite well and now I'm back on using black because it adds some dimension, it makes it all dramatic and I shouldn't be so afraid of it. I'm gonna do a very soft type of cut crease type of thing so I'm gonna pick up a touch of my foundation on my finger and tap it on my lid. That might be a bit much though. And then I'm gonna tap this out on my lid towards the inner part. I don't want anything too precise, okay, I guess that wasn't enough, I just want it to be a bit lighter for the colour to go on top. Taking the tip of my beauty blender, smoothing it out, being careful not to push it around because I don't want to mess up all my eyeshadow. And just dragging it out with my finger, now that my finger is clean, to just smudge those edges. I'll blend it with some eyeshadow too. So the colour I really want to use is this one, but I want it to be a bit brighter, so I'm going to mix in a touch of that one, not this one. So I'm going to pick up this and a touch of that and a bit more of that and I'm going to apply it right where I just applied the concealer or foundation, whatever. It's been a while by the time this goes up, I can talk about it. How many of you guys have watched Avengers Endgame? Because, oh my gosh, that was a good movie. Let me know what you guys thought about it, but when I started watching it, don't worry, I won't give any spoilers, but the beginning part, it's like things are happening too fast, so much so that you kind of know that what you're hoping is going to happen is not going to happen because it's happening too fast and it's a three hour movie, we all knew that before we went in so I knew what was going to happen at the beginning and then I kind of felt this movie's kind of meh, you know and then all the other stuff happened uh, the whole point of the story, they kind of introduced the concept they want to play with and then it's still kind of, mm, yeah I've heard fan theories about this, it's kind of a little cliche and then when they actually get into it, then it gets cool and when they get to the fight and the battle and the action, that's what I'm there for. It was good. I went in there hoping to cry. I would have been I would have been very disappointed if I walked out there without having shed a single tear. And let me tell you, I shed quite a few, so I am very happy with that. It was good feeling when I walked out of there, I was satisfied. I am going to take this golden-ish color on my finger and I'm going to apply it over that part of my lid. Not too much, just enough to have it have like the two colors going on. But back to the movie, those of you that watched it, you know about the scene where everyone was applauding Cap. I kind of had a suspicion that was going to happen. My one friend before we walked in the movie, he was also like, I think that's going to happen in the movie. I think Cap's going to do that. And he did, but wow, that was a powerful moment. I was blown away when that happened. I was 
very much impressed let me tell you that and what's really cool is i got to watch it in imax so it's like this big curved screens and the 4d experience and it was great i was very impressed with that as well i've been in prestige but i haven't been in imax yet so imax was it was good those of you that haven't watched the movie yet i'm so proud of you for surviving this long i hope nobody has given you any spoilers and ruined the movie for you because it's a great experience any type of movie not just avengers or action or movies it's great to get to watch a movie especially if you're very hyped about it and it sucks if someone spoils it for you and i don't understand why you would spoil a movie for someone so i hope no one spoils it for you but let me know if you guys are team captain america or team iron man because that was a big debate before the movie many people were fighting about that and i am definitely tony stark i am team iron man by far and don't get me wrong i love captain america but that hasn't helped me being able to speak while doing eyeliner i will admit i was sleeping on captain america i didn't watch captain america movies until like last year i know very late i saw civil war when it came out but the first avenger and all that didn't watch it and the winter soldier was great my favorite is the first Captain America movie, where it begins all wimpy and ends up all fantastic and superhero-y. His movies are great. They're better than the second Iron Man movie, but we don't talk about the second Iron Man movie. But the rest are good Iron Man movies, but the Captain America movies were also great. I just saw them really late. But either way, I'm still a much bigger Tony Stark fan. Now for the moment, we've all been waiting for. I can take the tape off. And then it makes like this very sharp line you have to blend out, but at least your eyeliner looks good. Usually, this one I put a little low. That's bad. But we will deal with that. I'm gonna just try and wipe the eyeshadow away that dropped, but I'm gonna cover it in any ways with foundation, because I'm doing my foundation next. My hair is still not cooperating and staying out of my face, so let's try putting it up again. Let's hope that lasts long enough for me to get foundation on my face. Ooh, that came out fully foundation on my face. I am gonna tap it onto my face. I put it in this type of container when I do makeup in random places because then it's easier to pack and all that jazz. So I'm just using it like this, tapping it onto my face. But as I was saying, as much as I am a fan of Tony Stark and Iron Man, my favorite superhero is not him. My, my favorite is Spider-Man. And I love the original Spider-Man, as in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. That is the true, the one, the only Spider-Man. You can fight me, you can say it's cringy. I know it's cringy, doesn't mean I don't love it. It's my favorite one of them all. I have no issues with Tom Holland though. He's really cute. He's good at what he does. He plays really accurate Spider-Man. I do love his work, but my OG Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire. I realize now that me doing my makeup for tonight is actually 100% for myself and not looking good for Babe because he's going to be wearing a blindfold. He ain't gonna be seeing the difference. But I love doing my makeup. And as I always say, an excuse is a good excuse to do your makeup. So even if you can't see me, I still wanna do it. On to concealer, the usual mix. I'm so afraid that someday I'm gonna get distracted by talking to the camera and I'm gonna blend like this my concealer after doing my eyeshadow and then as usual just blend over my eyelid and then realize just messed up all my eyeshadow. Don't wanna do that. As you all know, I've become a powder junkie. Not that type of powder, the setting type of powder. Kabuki brushes are amazing. You pick up a whole lot of powder, as in a whole lot, and you just put it all over your face. I'm not entirely a baker. Because I don't leave it on and then wipe it off. I just put it on and then buff it in until it ain't gonna buff it no more. And stuff like how white and powdery my shirt is now is why I usually don't wear what I'm gonna wear while doing my makeup. But I wanted to, so I'm just gonna have to dust it all off. Don't be worried about wearing too much powder. I know a lot of people stress about that, but I think being super matte looks really good I don't dry out I just look matte I have to say it works with setting powder it does not work with foundation powder then I look cakey and I don't dig that at all so only set your whole face with setting powder a translucent one 
So it doesn't feel too top heavy for the rest of the video. I'm gonna go in with first those two colors again, right against my lower lash line, as in right against it, not even blending it. I like applying the color first because later on I'm gonna go in with a brush to blend it. Just concentrate it right up against your lash line. Right over that, I'm gonna take this dark brown that I used and put it right up against it as well. And the black is gonna go just in the outer corner, kind of just to connect to the wing. Then with this brush, just dusting it off, and I'm gonna go right underneath and blend it. I used to be a fan of like really thick la lower lash lines, and then I did really thin one, and I was like, oh my gosh, it looked great. And now I kind of swing between the two. I love the thin look though, it's just much harder to do. You need the right type of brush. I don't have it anymore, because it's not cruelty free. And then also take this brush and run around where this edge is. It kind of diffuses it a little bit, because it's a bit strong on its own. Just gonna make it a bit softer in that area. You can also grab your blending brush, if I can find mine. And with nothing on it, just run over that outer edge so that it's not that strong of a line. It fades better. Using my lip brush and my Kali Baba palette, I'm gonna pick up this straight up gold highlighter and a bit of this white one so it's nice and bright. Mix them. And I'm gonna place it in my inner corner. Actually, I think I'm gonna just place the white one first so that I can brighten up the area I want it to go in. And I'm placing it just on the top. I found that placing it on the lower part, on my lower lash line as well, kind of makes it drop. I don't like that. So I'm putting it on the top and dragging it up. And after I place the white, I'll place the gold on top of it so that the gold is nice and bright. I'm kind of dragging it up into my crease when there's like not much left on my brush, just to accentuate that area as well. And like I said, I'm gonna go over it with the gold. Placing that gold underneath my brows as well, because you have to have your highlighter everywhere. And as always, rub over it to calm it down a bit. I think we were talking about movies before I like switched over into makeup mode, because I don't know what time it is. I started early, I started like at four and I have until six. So I don't think I'm late yet, but I don't want to be late. So I do kind of want to focus my makeup and not sit here for three hours. Speaking of my makeup, I'm using this Essence Eyebrow Kit. I'm kind of mixing these two colors with my eyebrow brush and just kind of stamping it on. And we were talking about superhero movies. Now, Avengers is a big deal. Everyone loved that. But that's not everyone's favorite type of movie. My favorite type of movie actually are horror movies. I am a sucker for horror movies. Don't take that as I'm not scared by horror movies. On the contrary, I get scared out of my skin, but that's kind of the fun part. I love being scared. I just horror movies have a fun thrill to them. Thrillers are also good, but thrillers usually try to hard, so I'm not that crazy about them. But stuff like Jaws and Jurassic Park, those were good. Those were classics. And then I'm also an action movie fan. The next John Wick movie coming out, totally gonna watch that. But of course, I still watch every other type of movie. I, the only type of movie I'd kind of avoid watching are comedies unless it's highly recommended to me by someone. I'm gonna contour my nose a bit, so I'm gonna pick up this color and a touch of that one and run it down the sides. I put it right here where my nose is as thin as I want it and drag it straight down off the tip, a bit on the tip, and then do the same on the other side. I'm just blending it with my brush a bit, not too hectic, but also I don't apply too much to begin with. Then I take my big kabuki brush and run over it because that helps to blend it. The same colors right underneath my lip to make my lip pop a bit. And with my fluffy blending brush, same colors again, hollows of my cheek. And then I curve it up a bit like so, just to like lift my cheek up. But I'm doing this with a very light hand. I'm not being intense. If I wanted to do this all intense and extreme, I would have used way more foundation. And also I would have used a cream product instead of powder. And then kabuki brushes blend everything. For mascara, I'm using the mascara I said I was never going to use and I said I was going to throw it away so I did a hundred layers of mascara challenge with it and it turns out I really like it so it is the Essence Get Big Lashes Volume Curl Mascara, the lash lifting one. I feel this look calls for blush. So I'm going to take this deepish color here. I don't want anything light. I want that. I'm not going to apply on the apples. I'm going to apply it here like above my contour. 
I feel if you apply it more to the side and to the back, it's a more mature look, where if you apply it more to the front, it's a more youthful look. So it's kind of like what you're going for in that moment. But something I don't understand is people that take blush on their temples as well. I, I don't get it. I want to do a nude because I'm going to eat. I don't want my lipstick to come off. So I'm going to start with this LA Girl Ooh La La. It's very pale, very pink, I know. But it's where I'm going to start. I feel like mixing in this color because I know it doesn't come off. I don't know what type of lip I'm going for, but I feel like this and another mauve type of one I have might be in the right direction. But I don't have a lip liner for this color and I don't feel like sharpening the other one I have so I'm gonna use my lip brush and I'm gonna get real close with the mirror and I'm gonna brush it on like paint the lines happy with this now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take this color and I'm gonna touch it to my lips because it'll mimic the color on my lids a bit give it a metallic hint as well I'm gonna spray some setting spray and that's hopefully gonna make it all melt together and look better. I'm surprised my hair lasted, kept itself up. I can probably just wear it as is, I'm thinking. I'm gonna put on my skirt and everything and I need to take a picture. I always forget to take a picture for the thumbnail. So I need to remember to do that and get ready and go. Thank you so much for getting ready with me I'm going to get my whole outfit and jewelry on and stuff and try and get a picture. And then if you haven't seen the video of how this date turns out, I will link it down below for you guys so you can check it out and see what happens. If you have already seen that video, like we said, no spoilers. Don't ruin the fun for me. I don't want to know what's going to happen. Hopefully it goes well and I'll see you again next time. Bye!